please stand for the opening hymn. Bless the Lord, who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Hear the commandments of God to his people. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of bondage. You shall have no other gods but me. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not make for yourself any idol. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not invoke with malice the name of the Lord your God. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Honor your father and your mother. Amen. You shall not commit murder. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit adultery. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not steal. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not bear a false witness. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Jesus said the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. After a moment of silence, let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. 
We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world, evermore give us this bread that he may live in us and we in him, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the word. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you, and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do, and you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him, trembling, and said, do you come peaceably? He said, peaceably. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. 
Then Jesse made Shammah pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesus made seven, Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The proper response for this, the fourth Sunday in Lent, is Psalm 23. We will lead responsively by the whole verse. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A reading from the letter to the Ephesians. Once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Sleeper. Awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God.
holy gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory, Glory to you, you, Lord Christ. As he walked along, Jesus said, saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's work might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. Then he went and washed and came back, able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as beggars, as a beggar, began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, Then how were your eyes opened? He answered, The man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day, and Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, He put mud on my eyes, then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, how can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, Do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said, He is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until he called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? The parents answered, We know that this is our son, and that he is born blind, but we do not know how it is that now he sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age, he will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, He is of age, ask him. So for the second time they called a man who had been blind, and they said to him, Give glory to God, we know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know that this man is a sinner. And he answered, I do not know, oh my God, he, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know is that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, what did he do to you? Yeah. How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I told you already and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples? And they reviled him saying, you are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, he is an astonishing 
Here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to the one who worships him and obeys him. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opens the eyes of a person born blind. If this man was not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born entirely in sins, and are you trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out, and when he had found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me, that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you now is he. He said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. And Jesus said, I come into this world for judgment so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? And Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would not have sin. But now that you say we see, your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. <clears throat> Isn't it a miracle that we are even alive today? <laughs> now I know some of you may be saying miracles are only extraordinary things, like when healings occur, when traditional medicine cannot heal, or when you pray for something really, really amazing, like don't die, and they don't die. Or maybe you pray, die, and they die. So which is the miracle? I think I've mentioned this before, or something like it in, my, in past sermons, but many of you know that my dad had lung cancer for two years. The surgeons removed an entire lung and performed weeks of radiation, and he got a little better, and then he got a little worse. My dad and mom eventually decided to have hospice care at home. I will never forget the night after he had been in so much pain for so long. Mom and I sat down in the living room. I can picture it now. It was nighttime. We were seated just below our floor lamp, right next to the piano, and we began to pray. Lord, take him away. Take him out of the pain. No more, God, no more. Free him. And I kid you not, at that very moment, the nurse began walking down the stairs to tell us that Dad had just died. Mom and I, of course, looked at each other in complete disbelief and then rushed upstairs to the bedroom. I remember she got on top of Dad, crying, pleading, not my husband, no, don't take my love, please come back, no, no. Of course, he was dead. She kissed him, hugged him, he was gone. Was it a miracle? He had died right as we prayed, right? I have to admit, as I was writing this sermon this week, all by myself in my office down in the basement, I started to cry as I was putting this together. And then I continued, I composed myself, uh, took off my glasses to wipe my eyes and continued writing the story down. And then I started crying again. Um, Dad died 27 years ago in 1996. 
I guess you never get over it, do you? Miracles. I believe that that was a miracle, but isn't every day a miracle? Isn't it a miracle that we have a sun that, see, that heats the world perfectly so that life can be sustained here? Isn't it a miracle when two people meet and fall in love? Or when a baby is born? Or the process of making a baby? I won't go into that miracle too much today. It is a miracle when I study something and I can memorize something. Or when a seed goes into the dirt, of course, and out grows a flower or food that can nourish us. Have you ever heard Beethoven's Seventh Symphony? Miracle. This sanctuary is a miracle, and certainly the architects and the builders who built it were miraculous. I have told you about one of our parishioners, Sarah Morris. She usually watches on our live stream. She's had cerebral palsy all of her life. In fact, let's give a shout out to Sarah. Maybe turn around to the camera there. Uh, she's probably watching today. The umbilical cord was wrapped around her neck, neck while in the womb, cutting off all the blood supply for a period of time. That can't be a miracle, right? They gave her no more than 12 years to live after she was born. She can't really talk, and she has virtually no use of her arms and legs. Oh, she's 53, has authored two books through computer breakthrough technology, and is a sports writer for Major League Baseball. <laughs> She lives in a loving household through our magic city here in Cheyenne, Miracle, and the people that care for her are miraculous. Hans Christian Andersen wrote, quote, the whole world is a series of miracles, but we're so used to seeing them, we call them ordinary things. <laughs> the Bible is filled with miracles. In the Hebrew text, or the Old Testament, the Lord said to Samuel, how long will you grieve over Saul? Wait, isn't it a miracle in itself that a spiritual being, God, was speaking to Samuel? We just brush by that story about God communicating through Samuel that David is to be the king of Israel, thinking that maybe it's just another ordinary story in the Bible, right? But isn't it a miracle that God even directed a human being, Samuel, through all of Jesse's sons, as we heard today, the older ones, those are the ones that should have been the king of Israel, because they were older, according to traditions. But God told Samuel to choose David, the youngest, the kind of nobody, little shepherd boy. It happened with Moses as well, right? His brother Aaron was the natural born leader. He really should have been chosen. Better communicator all around, but God had someone else in mind, and somehow he maneuvered things in the world to make it happen with Moses. Miracle, right? In the psalm, we learn that this supernatural being, our Lord, apparently shepherds us and leads us down into green pastures and beside still waters, or our God leads us to peace. He miraculously revives our souls when our souls need reviving and guides us along straight pathways. Our Lord even walks with us through the valley of death, right? And helps us to not fear over anything. Do not fear about anything. Our God offers us goodness, mercy, love, and forgiveness. And we will dwell with this loving God forever. Isn't that miraculous? In the Gospel of John, we learn of a more recognizable and traditional image of a miracle, of course. A man is born blind, and God is going to do something extraordinary with him. In Jewish tradition, many people thought that because he was born blind, someone in the previous generation must have done something wrong, sinned, and this was, his blindness was a consequence of that sin. But Jesus corrected them, saying, no one sinned. 
He was born blind, and now God's going to do something amazing with him. Maybe even teach him computer technology to author books and be a sports writer, right? Just like Sarah. Or maybe God was going to help this man see again, to not be blind, and then bring him to faith. God would help him see through his son, Jesus. Jesus spat on the ground and made mud with his saliva. So this miracle is a messy miracle, right? And this was a no-no, by the way, because in the faith tradition of Jews, you don't do any kneading of anything on the Sabbath day because that was considered work. It was not allowed. But of course, Jesus did it anyway. He spread the mud on the man's eyes and sent the man to the pool of Siloam. And when the man washed his face, he could then see Jesus healed the man. My first point is that miracles happen, I believe, all the time. They may be obvious miracles, like in the gospel, or they may be less obvious or not so obvious miracles, like waking up in the morning or having a positive attitude when there's maybe no good reason to have a positive attitude. What are your miracles? I woke up. (laughs) I ate food which nourished my body. I had hot water in my shower this morning. I drove a car to church. Caroline and I have two daughters. Caroline and I fell in love. I have friends. I'm part of this wonderful community here of St. Mark's. How about you? What are your miracles? My second point in this sermon is what happened next in the gospel. People questioned Jesus. They questioned his actions, and they questioned the miracle itself. Some people thought that Jesus, Jesus was even a demon because he healed a man, which was work, and he healed a man on the Sabbath day. Jesus just thought that healing superseded the religious traditions. Maybe that's a miracle in itself, right? The religious leaders couldn't stand Jesus and all of this work he was doing. They tried to trap him, convince others how bad he was. The authorities questioned the blind man even, who could now see, and the blind man basically said, look, (laughs) This guy rubbed some mud in my eyes. He sent me to a pool. I washed, and now I see. That's the story. When God works, people will not always react well. Don't be surprised as you share your faith with others if people just brush it off or maybe treat you poorly. My final point is that in the end, when the man could see after being blind, he followed the Lord. Jesus asked the man, do you believe in the Son of Man? And the healed man responded, Lord, I believe. And then he worshiped him. He did exactly what we are doing today. I believe miracles happen all day and all night, every moment of every day in God's glorious universe. Second, I believe that people will question the work of God. And third, I believe that worshiping and believing in God is necessary, if for any reason, to have a positive attitude in the world, right? I close with the words of William Martin, and I quote, Do not ask your children to strive for extraordinary lives. Such striving may seem admirable, but it is a way of foolishness, he says, Help them instead to find the wonder and marvel of an ordinary life. Show them the joy of tasting tomatoes, apples, and pears. Show them how to cry when pets and people die. Show them the infinite pleasure in the touch of a hand and make the ordinary come alive for them, the extraordinary will take care of itself.
And now let's stand and reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. It can be found at the bottom of page five of your bulletins, page five, or in the Book of Common Prayer. And let us proclaim it together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. Believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We now continue with the prayers of the people. With confidence and trust, let us pray to the Lord. For the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, Lord of compassion. In your mercy, hear us. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, Lord of compassion. In your mercy, hear us. For those preparing for baptism and for their teachers and sponsors, Lord of compassion. In your mercy, hear us. For peace in the world, that a spirit of respect and reconciliation may grow among nations and peoples, Lord of compassion. In your mercy, hear us. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for refugees, prisoners, and all in danger, that they may be relieved and protected. Lord of compassion. In your mercy, hear us. In communion with all those who have walked in the way of holiness, remembering especially those who have died. I ask your prayers for St. Barnabas' Episcopal Church in Saratoga and for the Anglican Church of Southern Africa. Your own prayers and petitions may be added at this time. Lord of compassion, in your mercy, hear us. Lord God, in your love and goodness, you have taught us to come close to you in penitence, with prayer, fasting, and generosity. Accept our Lenten discipline, and when we fall by our weakness, raise us up by your unfailing mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Having said the confession at the beginning, I invite you all to stand as you are able for the peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
And let's turn and offer all those online a piece as well. Give them a wave uh, up at the camera there. Mm -hmm. And as you finish the piece, you're welcome to be seated. Um, welcome to all of you on this Sunday morning. We're blessed that you are here today with us in community. We are especially glad if you're a guest or a visitor. And if you are one, I would ask that you fill out a welcome card. It's the smaller card in the front of each pew. Uh, and in a few minutes, we'll hand around the offering plates and I would ask that you make that your offering today. That'll help us to better connect with you. There's also a place on those cards on the back for anyone to write down prayer requests, and those go to our two different prayer teams. So feel free to place those also in the offering plates. If you're online, call us. Let us know who you are, and certainly uh, ask us any questions that you may have. But we are blessed. We are blessed that you're all here. Uh, a couple of things. Uh, people have been asking for offering envelopes. They're in. Three months late, but they're in. And so they're in the back of the church if anyone likes to use offering envelopes. And they're listed as offering envelopes on the front. So uh, let's see. In the next week and a half, our bishop is coming down, Paul Gordon Chandler, with his staff. And we'll be hosting something called Grounded. Uh, at the State Museum, and it's Thursday, March 30th. You'll start to see more and more about this in the next couple weeks. Uh, and indigenous uh, people who are artists have done all of this art that is going throughout Wyoming, throughout America, and then uh, in different places throughout the world as well. And they're coming to Cheyenne. There's going to be a drum circle there and a cedaring of all the art, and uh, it should be an incredible evening. The next morning on Friday, March 31st, um, at 9 o'clock, we'll be here at the church for a light breakfast, and the bishop will be here, and we'll have two descendants of Chief Washakie who will be here from uh, the reservation, and uh, they'll offer some words along with the sculpture of the sculptor who put together our Chief Washakie sculpture as part of the city bronze project. Then we'll go over there and cedar the sculpture, and the bishop will offer a blessing. So that's a week from this Thursday and Friday. It should be a wonderful couple events of events, so join us. And really, that's the lead into Holy Week, right? We have Women of the Passion on April 1st, and then a full week of worship leading up to Easter. So join us for all of that. Oh, we also have an all-night vigil sign up in the back of the church there. Uh, from Maundy Thursday in the evening through to Good Friday at noon, we have at least one person at a time in the church, locked of course, um, where they're staying awake one hour at a time. So you can sign up for one of those hours if you'd like. Um, it's a powerful experience. Or multiple people could be in here as well. So that's in the back of the church. Okay, are there any birthdays or anniversaries this week? And if so, please come forward at this time. And as they come forward, let's turn to the birthday anniversary blessing in the bulletin. And it's on the top of page seven. Page seven. And let's pray it together. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I can ask you, you're young enough, how old are you? 20. 20, nice, cool. You came over from Laramie just for this, yeah, didn't you? 
Right on. And how many years have you all been married? Birthdays. Birthdays. Then I won't ask. <laughs> you can return to your seats. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God. Please stand. The service continues with the offertory words and the Eucharistic words on page seven of your bulletins. Page seven. <clears throat> All things come of you, O Lord, and of your own have we given you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. From before time you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being, sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways, but we rebelled against you and wandered far away, and yet, as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again, you called us to live in the fullness of your love, and so this day, we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity lifting our voices to magnify you as we sing together.
glory and honor and praise to you, holy and living God, to deliver us from the power of sin and death and to reveal the riches of your grace. You looked with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners. He healed the sick and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again, he gave thanks to you. He gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves a living sacrifice. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with Mark and all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the table, not of the church, but of the Lord. It is made ready for those who love him and for those who want to love him more. Come, all those who have much faith and those who have little, those who have been here often and those who have not been here long, those who have tried to follow you and those who have failed. Come because it is the Lord who invites us. It is God's will that those who desire God should meet God here. 
hear. Amen. Amen. At the direction of the ushers, if you would like to receive communion, we welcome you to come to the altar rail, place one hand over the other, that'll cue us that you'd like communion, or place both arms over your chest if you'd like a blessing only. We can also bring communion out to you as needed, but you are welcome.
The service continues with the post-communion prayer on page 10 of your bulletins, page 10. And let us pray it together. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, and renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Look down in mercy, Lord, on your people who kneel or stand before you, and grant that those whom you have nourished by your word and sacraments may bring forth fruit worthy of repentance. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.